G'day, welcome to the Tech Math channel. What we're going to be having a look at in today's video is the fastest way of working out the highest common factor of two given numbers, okay? Uh, and when I say this, this is the largest number that goes into both, and it's the two numbers that I'll give you. And this is a really, really fast and a very accurate way of, of doing this. Okay, so I'll give you an example. We're going to try and find, I'll give you 10 seconds to find the greatest common factor, the highest common factor, the biggest number that goes into both. What about 196 and 84? So I'll give you 10 seconds to do this. And time's just about up. Hopefully you have the highest common factor, the greatest common factor of 28. And if you had that, excellent work. If not, I'm going to show you how to work this out. And you might, even if you got it, you might want to still have a look at this method anyway, okay? So how do we get this greatest common factor so quickly? I'll show you how to do this. So what we do is the following. We look at our two numbers here, uh, our 196, now 84, and we're basically going to choose which is the smallest one, 8 is 84, and we're going to divide it into the largest one, 196. So 84 into 196, hey, it goes 2 times, because 84 times 2, 168. This is a remainder of 28. Okay, now it's this remainder that we're going to be worried about for the next step. We're going to move this remainder to, on to the next step. Okay, so 28, we're moving on to this next step. The other part we move to the next step is the smallest of our numbers, the ones that we divided into one another. In this case, it was the original two numbers. We had 196, 84. The smallest is 84. But uh, if we were going on to the next, you know, another step and another step, we'd choose the smallest out of, say, these two. Okay, so what we do is we repeat this step. How many times does 28 go into 84? Hey, it goes in three times. It goes in three times and there is no remainder. Okay, it goes in perfectly. So, once there's no remainder here, we stop this because now we know the greatest common factor, okay? And it's this number that we divided into, okay? The smaller of our two numbers here. Okay, so it's 28. So did you get that? So pretty much what we do for this method is we're going to be dividing the smaller number into the larger number of our two numbers. We start with our two numbers we're trying to find the greatest common factor of, and we're going to be moving any remainder onto this next stage as well as the smallest one of them from the previous step, and we're going to continue this till we get no remainder. Once we get no remainder, the number that we've divided into the other one, okay, the smallest of these two, that is our greatest common factor, or our highest common factor, okay? So, what about we have a look at a couple more examples? What about I give you an example with one that you're probably going to be able to look at straight away and work out the factors of. Say we had 72 and 60. Now, you may look at this straight away and go, hey, okay, the highest common factor is that. And that, that's great if you can. But I'm just going to use it to show you this method. So anyway, we're going to divide 60 into 72. 60 goes into 72 one time. It goes in one time. And it has a remainder of 12. Okay, so this remainder we're going to put down here. And we're going to take the smallest of these two numbers and we're going to use that for our next part. So now we look at 60 and 12. How many times does 12 go into 60? 12 goes into 60 five times with no remainder. So 12 is our highest common factor. Yeah? Did you get that method? Okay, what about, uh, we'll go through another one. Okay, uh, what about, I'll give you one, I'll give, we'll go through one more together and then I'll give you guys a couple. So what about 148 and 48? Okay, so we're looking how many times does 48 go into 148? It goes three times. Okay, 148 goes in three times. And it has a remainder of four. Okay, so we're going to move this remainder here, this four here, and we're going to move the 48 here, the smaller of these two down to here. Now we look at how many times four goes into 48. Four goes into 48 12 times. Okay, it goes in 12 times, and there is no remainder. So, 4 is our highest common factor. Yeah, what about I give you a go doing this? Okay, so it's, it's the remainders we're interested in. And this is a very, very old method. This is the Euclidean method of doing this. It's, 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 it's fairly old, okay? Um, what about you try this with a 130 and 78? Then you might want to pause the video and, and, and do this. So, 
Hopefully you've done it. Hopefully you've given it a go. So we're going to see how many times 78 goes into 130. Okay, how many times does it go in? It goes in once, and there is a remainder of 52. Okay, so I'm going to put this 52 here, and I'm going to move the smaller of these two numbers, the 78, down here. Okay, so now I see how many times 52 goes into 78. It goes in once, yeah? It goes in once with a remainder of 26. Okay, so now I'm going to move this 26 down here, move the remainder here, move the smaller of these two numbers, the 52, down here as well. Okay, how many times does 26 go into 52? It goes in two times. No remainder. So, our highest common factor is 26. What about one last happy example for one of you guys, okay? And look, this does work for really, really big numbers. It's, it's excellent. It's, it's probably the best method for using with big numbers. Obviously, small numbers, you can use your multiplication knowledge, and that gets you fairly far. But with bigger numbers, this is a really, really great method. Okay, so what about, we give you this one. What about uh, 585? Go, a really big number. Well, it's not really big, is it? But it's a big number. 585 and 105. You're going to look already and go, hey, 5 goes into that, but what would be the highest common factor of these two? So, we start out, we'd see how many times 105 goes into uh, 585. It goes in 5 times. You can see that. Okay, so 5 times 105 is going to be a 525. There's a remainder of 60. Okay, so I'll put the 60 here. And I move this 105 down from here. Okay, all good. Yeah, okay, how many times does now 60 go into 105? It goes in once, yeah, because two times would take it up to 120. So it goes in once, and it has a remainder of 45. Okay, so we put the 45 here, put the 60 here. Hey, look, you can see we're getting somewhere, 45 and 60, okay? Numbers are getting smaller. How many times is 45 going to 60? goes in once, then there's 15 remainder. Okay, so put the 15 here, 45. I reckon you've just probably worked it out now what it is, the highest common factor, because 15 goes into 45, it goes in three times. But it has no remainder. So our highest common factor, oh, you might have guessed it, is 15. Anyway, hopefully you like this method. I'd like to give a big shout out. A few people alerted me to this. Uh, I made a video on, on uh, factor, factorization and how uh, working at the highest common factor. And a few people said, hey, why don't you do this method? Why don't you use this method? This method's much better. And I thought, hey, you're right on that one. Okay, so so thank you a lot for those guys. Uh, Nikki, I think, was the first person who got that. Thanks a lot for that. Anyway, see you next time.